We praise God, Prophet Joshua Holmes. Everybody share this broadcast. Invite your followers. The power of the Holy Spirit is so real. Now you imagine Elijah. The woman at Zarephath is at her last provision. She's saying that her and her son is going to die. And the first thing that Elijah introduces to the woman at Zarephath is sowing. Saints, what I want you to catch is that sowing is a life-changing weapon that Jesus has generously revealed to you. It's a revelation. The first thing that Elijah reveals to this woman to stop the death. Watch this. To stop the death. Think about this, saints. Her and her son has a death sentence over them. They have a satanic curse over them. They have principalities ruling their life. Saints, I want you to look at the bigger picture. This woman at Zarephath is a woman underneath demonic powers. She's a woman underneath witchcraft. Money don't obey her. Provision don't surrender to her. Wealth does not submit to her. And she can't take care of her own child, her son. So she's underneath the powers of Satan. She's underneath evil spirits ruling her life. She does not have the blessing flowing. Evil spirits are flowing through her. Her finances, her income, her livelihood. The first thing the prophet reveals to her is to hide her soul. The first thing the prophet tells her to do, he didn't say, come on, let's go pray and let's go beseech God. Let's find out from God what, what he can do to get us out of this. The first thing the prophet reveals and introduces to her is the sowing weapon. So, so hereby you see prophetically that sowing was his response of how to kill the killer that was after her. Because remember, John 10.10 10 said that a thief come to kill. So Elijah teaches her how to kill the killer. My God. And he don't take her into a prayer session. He don't tell the woman, come on, let's go on a fast together. He reveals to her how to sow. He teaches her how to sow. He introduces the sowing mantle to her. Watch this. But she needs money. She needs provision. She needs to be free from this principality that's tormenting her life. Go watch this, saints. What I want you to catch is that she underneath a principality. This principality in her region is deciding all of her substance that she'll be broke in poverty, in lack, in struggle, and she'll eventually die. Watch this. Elijah reveals to her that because what could stop the satanic verdict. Elijah reveals to her what could break that satanic power off of her money. What could break the satanic power off of her provision. And watch what he tells her. I want you to sow. He starts teaching her about sowing. He starts teaching her about giving. He starts teaching her about the sowing mantle of God, the sowing mantle of God. And saints, hereby you see that the seed has more power than all the satanic kingdom combined. Hereby you see a mystery that the seed stops famine. Let's go to Job chapter 5, verse 22. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Everybody, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Invite your followers. 
and share me. Let's go to Job chapter 5. Let's go to verse 22. Job 5, 22. It says, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Now, this is massive, saints, because what it's telling you in the text that you're going to laugh at famine and destruction. You don't have to be, you know, to know that a famine is financial lack. A famine is the scarcity of money, provision, increase, abundance. It's the scarcity of what you need. Saints, it says that you'll laugh at the famine. So that means that you're going to mock Satan's kingdom. Hereby, you see the mystery that through sowing, you mocking demons. You mocking evil spirits. Watch. This woman at Zarephath is underneath demonic powers. These evil spirits have stopped the flow of money. So money cometh not working for her. Supernatural money not moving for her. She's in an economic curse. But Elijah the prophet shows her how to break that satanic, manipulative, locust, canker worm. Palmer worm and caterpillar off of her life through the seed. Watch this, saints. Every demon was mocked when she gave that seed to Elijah. Watch this. She disappointed every principality because they thought that they was going to restrain her life to be in bondage. They thought that they was going to subject her to the income that she was making. See, says this is what the devil be trying to do. Try to get you um, bound to the income that you're making. G get you subject to your paycheck. Get you in bondage to what you got on you. Think that that's the only thing that you're going to get. And it's a trick. But what happened was the prophet opened up her eyes to another economy. The supernatural account. The money bags of Jesus. He opened up our eyes to a heavenly government that supplies that abundance start manifesting for you. But he did it through sowing. Saints, his was powerful. He took her out of slow money into nonstop money. He took her out of this demonic embarrassment and this shame and brought her into double which you see in Isaiah uh, 61 and say, you shall have double for your shame. So hereby you see how the seed is Satan's worst nightmare. This woman no longer has this principality operated, so she becomes blessed. She abounds with blessings. She becomes wealth. She becomes riches because she listened to the prophet on introducing that sewing mantle of God to her. Now, her life is no longer underneath this principality. So she got more than enough. She activates her abundance through sowing. Saints, see saints, every time you sowing, you mocking the devil. Every time you sowing, you embarrassing every verdict that Satan has planted upon you. When you sowing, God gonna take care of you going to take care of your living arrangements. He going to take care of the bills. And then watch this. The Lord willfully going to give you vision while you sowing and give you the provision so that you can rejoice in him. He going to willfully give you desires and then satisfy the desires so that you can celebrate him. 
this lady tapped into another economy. When you tap into this economy, billionaire status is easy. Becoming a billionaire is the most easiest thing that Jesus could ever do. It's not hard at all. When you learn stewardship with your money and the sowing anointing happen. Now watch this. I want to talk to you about throne room sowing. Because when you sowing out of the throne room, not sowing for the throne room, there's a difference. Because when you sowing for the throne room, you're in law. When you sowing from the throne room, you're in grace. And watch this. You're sowing from the throne of grace. Remember the Bible said, go boldly to the throne of grace, but you're sowing from the throne of grace. So now you're accessing grace power, grace miracles, grace money. See, there's gracious finances that Jesus will bestow upon you. There's gracious money that the Lord would plant in your bosom. Gracious. Now, let me just say this. When you throne room sowing, you sowing out the third heaven. When you sowing supernaturally, here's what Jesus is going to do. He's going to increase the money that you receive so that you can sow more. I know this. This is a lifestyle for me. When you sowing, when you a steward, watch this, watch this. If you sow in $300, right? And you only make probably like, what? $1,600 in a month or, or $1,300 in a month. I'm, I'm just giving the odd figure. Watch. God willfully will make sure that you make about $3,300 so that you can sow more. Because he know that you are sower. You don't prove to him that you are sower. You don't prove to him that, that you have adapted to the seed principle. You're proving to him that you honor him with your substance. So now he's going to increase the substance so that you can sow higher. Now watch this. When you get that higher raise, the devil going to tempt you. And he's going to tell you, don't sow, eat it, enjoy yourself. But if you eat it and enjoy yourself, you're telling the Lord, I don't want to go higher. So saints, watch, you stop the billionaire anointed. You stop the, the trillionaire anointing because God wants you to go higher. Saints, we come to disrespect millionaire status. <laughs> We're not there no more. I'm talking to you from the billionaire flow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, there's a divine Forbes list. There's a divine Forbes list where God make you rich. There's a divine Forbes list where God make you a billionaire, where God make you a trillionaire. And it's his power that brought you there because you decided to take the seed and plow the ground with it. Watch this, uh, Job, Job chapter five, verse 22. It says, at destruction and famine, you shall laugh. Why are you laughing at famine? Because you got a money anointing on you. Money cometh is working for you and no demon spirit is able to rejoice over your finances because there's no curse operating. You in the spirit realm financially. See, sowing will put you in the spirit realm financially. You know, when you're in the spirit realm financially, the minister of finances will serve you real good. The minister of finances will go the extra mile to make sure that money will never stop getting to you. The minister of finances will bring the fulfillment of Psalm 115 verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You'll keep going higher and higher in your finances. Remember what I told you. When you are a diligent sower, Jesus is going to make sure that he double your income so that you can sow higher. And then when you reach that, you master that, he's going to double your income again so that you can sow, sow higher. Then when you reach that, he's going to double your income again for you to sow higher. Then he's going to double it again until you sow high. Before you know it, you're going to be in billionaire status. But a lot of people never get there because they stop. Oh, no, I, no, this is my harvest. I got to spend this. All right. 
fine. But you just stopped the flow. You just stopped the, 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 the imagination of God. Saints, when you're not sowing, you stop the imagination of God. Write that down if you're taking notes. When you sow in, God is imagining, how could I bring you pleasure? How could I make you happy? How could I give you what you want? How could I bless you in the city? Bless you in the field? Bless you coming in? Bless you coming out? How could I make you the head and not the tail? How could I make you above and not beneath? How could I make you the lender? The lender is an anointing. When you have a lending anointing, God will cause you to lend because you decided to sow instead of spend. I want you to catch this. God will cause you to lend because you refuse, you, you decided to sow and refuse to spend. So he put an anointing of lending on you. How are you able to lend? Because you got so much money on you that you can lend and not borrow. You don't got to go to nobody and say, please, please, I, I need this, I need this. Because your money is so fat. Your money is so long. See, saints, when you sowing and you eating the anointing to sow, when you eating the scroll to sow, you're going to have obese money. When you eat in the scroll to sow, because the sowing mantle is a scroll, is a food that God fill your soul with so that your soul can be renewed to sowing. When, 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 when you eat in the sowing scroll, you're going to have obese money. You're going to have fat wealth. See, Jesus wants your money to have love handles because only love can handle it. Only love can make sure that that money go in the area that God wants it to go and it fulfill the assignment that God sent it to fulfill. Let's go to Psalm 112. Look at this. Psalm 112, the Bible is so full of wealth, is full of riches, is full of abundance. The Holy Spirit don't want you ever to deny this power to get wealth. Say, Father, I received the power to get wealth. I'm talking about money on here. I'm talking about a money, great grace of God. Look at Psalm 112. Look at verse 5. A good man showeth favor, and he lendeth. A good man showeth favor, and he lendeth. You see this? When you a good man, a God man, a sowing man, the Bible said you show a favor and you lendeth. This lendeth is anointing, is a mantle, is a realm of God. Lending is because you were sowing and not spending. And lending is the glory realm of God financially. Because God is supplying you with money so that you can lend. You could sow into your preacher. You could sow into God's work. You could support God's vision on the earth. You are now a sponsor system of Jesus Christ. And watch. When you receive the anointing and the power to get wealth, the anointing of sowing, God going to make the anointing of lending easy for you so that you can lend. Saints, lending is so powerful because you get to express God's love. Lending is so powerful because you get to do for somebody what their financial status is not letting them to do. Lending is so glorious because you get to be the answer to prayer. To somebody that is believing God for financial assistance and provisional miracles. Now, when you're sowing, you're working with a provisional miracle work in Jesus. 
So he's not going to let your seed go in the ground and not work miracles among it. Now Jesus is going to assign a soul to you. Your soul is not your soul. Your soul is going to feed your soul. Your, your soul. Your soul is going to feed your soul. You will know who is your soul because they're, they will always be feeding your soul. Your soul going to get fat off of them. In the same way when you eat at a restaurant, you pay the restaurant that you eat at. The same way God will give you a soul that wherever you eat the word from, you sow into that soul. When you sow in out of the throne room of God, you have to have this kingdom adequate to your sowing. You can't just sow aimlessly and all over the place. You got to know how to sow into the restaurant of God where food is being cooked and served and you're enjoying the meal. So that's your soul. When you're sowing out of the throne room, you're engaging in angelic activity. You're imitating that 24 elders. Because they're still sowing into Jesus today. I've done teachings on that. So I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> it's on Periscope. If you ain't got no Periscope, who raised you? As a matter of fact, don't worry about Periscope saying Periscope ain't high. I ain't. You ain't got to get on Periscope, shoot. Uh... When you sowing out of the throne room, you moving with angels, you moving with the elders. And the power of the Holy Spirit that is upon them, the atmosphere that they're in starts moving in your atmosphere on the earth. Remember Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Jesus was talking about getting heaven to manifest down here on the earth. What Jesus was revealing to us that there are weapons in the kingdom of God that you could use to manifest heaven on earth and get the atmosphere that people in heaven live in and get it down here on the earth. Praising God steps you into the courtroom where God give you justice. But sowing into God activates the verdict. See, praise is going to get you into the courtroom. Sowing is going to activate the verdict. So when you sowing the verdict that God decided to bless you, to prosper you, to increase you, is going to be made manifest. See, saints, you notice we talk about the miracle of, of all the thousands of people eating, right? We talk about that a lot. But you often forget that those miracles did not just happen. Somebody sold into Jesus. Those miracles did not just take place. They were sowing into Jesus. When they sowed into Jesus, now Jesus has it to multiply and to feed the multitude. So nobody would have ate if there was no seed. See, saints, I, I want you to see this. Oftentimes, you can't taste and see that the Lord is good because there's no seed. Your seed is going to activate God's permission to manifest the government. Now, saints, remember Isaiah the prophet caught the mystery that God put the government on Jesus' shoulders. And then Jesus revealed to us to give, to sow. So now Jesus is revealing to us how to get this government on our shoulders. Because you often forget the government not just supposed to be on Jesus' shoulders. It's supposed to be on your shoulders because you, John chapter 1 verse 12, says to as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. So he gave you the power to be a son. If you a son, you got sonship activity going on. Sonship privileges, sonship favor, sonship dominion, sonship authority. And one of those authority is that you got the authority to carry the government on your shoulders because you's a son. Now, 
sonship would produce governmental benefits in every arena of your finances. Sonship sowing. Sowing as a son. Not as a slave. Sowing as a son. You already got your father's inheritance. You already got a heavenly blessed account. We, are, we just dealt with lending on Psalm 112. That lending anointing is be, uh, you, you become somebody that lends because you refuse to spend. You chose to sow. So that lending anointing will sit on you. And that's God letting you walk in a supernatural dominion. If you made in the image and likeness of God, the image and likeness of God is riches. It is wealth. It is abundance. No good thing will I withhold from those that walk uprightly. When you saw and you walking uprightly. When you saw and you walking in the righteousness of God. When you saw and you are the righteousness of God. You, or you're operating in righteousness behavior. Because see, there's the gift of righteousness. You receive that freely. There's the fruit of righteousness. And the fruit of righteousness is a decision, is a behavior. And, and now you're doing kingdom activities. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Watch this, saints. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So, so every spiritual blessing has been given to you already, even the spiritual blessing of riches. Because Jesus received riches in, in Revelation 5.12. It says that he received riches and blessings. So blessings and riches has already been given to you. Billionaire status has already been given to you. Trillionaire status has already been given to you. So when you sowing, you sowing out of a trillionaire grace. A billionaire grace. When you're sowing, you're receiving the blessings in the heavenly places down here in the earth realm. Down here in the earth realm. Wow. Wow. Now watch this. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 7. In whom we have redemption. We got redemption through Jesus, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now watch this. It's talking about the according to his riches of his grace. But watch this. I, wanna, I want you to see this. Ephesians 1, 7 is talking about the riches of his grace. But 2 Corinthians 8, 9 is talking about the grace for his riches. Oh my God. How many of y'all caught that? Ain't that amazing? Ephesians 1, 7 is talking about the riches of of his grace, meaning that his ability is so rich, is a is is abounding, is is major, is mighty. But Second Corinthians eight nine is talking about the grace for his riches. So Ephesians one seven, the riches of his grace. But Second Corinthians eight nine, the grace for his riches. Now, the grace for his riches is dealing specifically. With getting money into your hands. Now saints. Don't ever pray for money. Because. God going to put money in your hand. When you. Present your body as a living sacrifice. You do a work. There's a work that God has everybody to do. And everybody got a different work. 
that work is going to put money in your hands and that money is really seed. You sow that money. You follow the wisdom of God when you're making money that way so God can promote you. Because most times um, God going to plant you, well, all the time. Let me say it like this. He going to plant you in the Babylonian system most times. Let me just say it like that. Most times he's going to plant you in the Babylonian system. So just like Daniel, you're going to be in the kingdom. So don't feel bad because Daniel was there. Joseph was there. When Joseph working for Potiphar, he in the Babylonian system. But God is still, watch the Bible said that the Lord is with him and he prospered. I think uh, Genesis 39, if I'm not mistaken. But he's prospering. Why? Because um that prosperity anointing, it don't matter where you at. You can be amongst heathens and wicked folk. The Lord, when he placed the prosperity anointing, you're going to birth money in the earth. Money going to keep on coming to you. You become a glue for money. You got a grace glue for money. Or a glue grace for money. You can have a glue grace for money. Where money is glued to you, is, is addicted to you. When you sowing into the Lord, into your man of God, into your apostle, your prophet, money has a soul tie with you. So it don't want to leave you alone. It has a soul tie. You can create a financial soul tie where money becomes addicted to you. Money will find you in the earth. It'll look for you and it'll get into your hands in a day, in a week, in a month. Through various means, God will create cash channels when you sow in. Cash channels. Channels will cash, will be collected by you. Not corrupted by you, collected by you. Because you are sower and you honor God. And he know he can put the money bags in your hands because you're not a thief. See, a thief mindset birthed a poverty environment. A thief mindset creates scarcity and famine in your location. He'll create cash channels when you sowing into your apostle. Sowing large money into your man of God is a supernatural hedge. Is a supernatural protection. God delivering you from futuristic disasters, tra tragedies, and issues. God setting you free from booby traps, satanic webs. Sowing will break the spider web off of your finances. You ever saw a spider, how it gets a fly and it wraps it up? Well, that's what Satan does. He likes to wrap up your money, wrap up your goods, your treasures, your abundance. Wrap up what belongs to you. Wrap up opportunities. Wrap up favor. Sowing will break every single satanic spider web off your money circulation. Sowing revelation birth money circulation. If you're taking notes, write that down. Sowing revelation birth money circulation, money demonstration. Your bosom was created for wealth. Your bosom is a blessed place for money to land upon. Your bosom is activated for riches. When you are a large sower, you should desire to sow $1,000 seeds. You should desire to sow tens of thousands and hundreds of dollars. You should, you should set goals. I wish, Lord, I can sow a million dollars this year. Every month, you should want to beat your sowing account. No, I, I know this realm. I move in this realm. You got to become your own competition when you are sore because you going up in the ranks. You're not going to have average finances. You're going to have anointed finances. There's a difference. You're not going to have average money. You got anointed money. 
You're not going to have messed money. You're going to have Messiah money. Mantle money. You're not going to have demonic money. You're going to have deliverance money. Money that God uses to deliver not only you, but people around you. Here's what's so powerful. Money is a defense. We see that in Ecclesiastes 7.12. Money is a defense. Huh? So if money is a defense, it shows you that money is a fence. So you ever saw a big old gate where nobody can enter that gate? Is, is a big old gate? Huh? I got gates around my house. You ever, you ever, you, you, you ever had a gate? A gate is to block out intruders. A gate is to block out anybody that want to uh, step into an atmosphere without permission. A gate is to keep out thieves. Well, watch this. If you got a gate in God, that means that the thief don't have access no longer to you because he got to pass this gate. Now, saints, what I want to show you is something powerful. How do you protect this gate? Psalm 100 said, enter into God's gates with thanksgiving. So, saints, I want you to see this. You keep your gates saturated with God through thanksgiving. So you got to be grateful. You can't just be someone sowing. If you just sowing and you don't got thankfulness, you can't be in that gate because you're going to get weary. You're going to get tired. Satan going to access your mind and start pouring deception into you. See, saints, you can very well begin a spiritual uh, weapon. But it's not about if you begin the spiritual weapon. Can you keep the spiritual weapon? How long will the spiritual weapon operate through you? Because, saints, you could use something divine. But if your mind ain't divine while you're using it, you're going to get weary. Demons going to discourage you. They're going to stop you. They're going to create situations that can get you out of it. So you got to be in thanksgiving. Godliness with contentment is great gain. That's what the word of God say. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You know what uh, contentment is and not complacency. Complacency means that you stop uh, growing. Contentment means that you stop uh, complaining. You caught that? Con uh, complacency means that you stop growing. Contentment means that you stop complaining. Which you see the children of Israel was always complaining because they didn't have contentment. So contentment is the ability to respect God where you are. It's the ability to celebrate Jesus, King Jesus, where he has you currently. To not be anxious and not to have a bad spirit and not find negativity about where you're located, but to rejoice that even he would decide to locate you there. Saints, you imagine how you sound when you say, I can't wait to leave this workplace. It might sound good to you, but how does it sound to God? Because God put you there. So don't, don't say that you, I can't wait to leave the workplace. Say, Lord, thank you that I have a place to work. Many people looking for jobs right now. Thank you that I have a place to work. Thank you for giving me favor to have a paycheck every two weeks, every week or what. That's billionaire reactions. You can't be a billionaire if you don't know how to uh, steward your attitudes. Your attitudes will decide where you're at. Financially, 
The first, look at the first ver, uh, 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 verbiage that you use when you say attitudes, at. So your attitude is going to decide where you're at in finances. So when Jesus said in the word through Apostle Paul, he loved cheerful givers. Why would you withhold from Jesus what he obviously said he loved? See, that's ludicrous if you say that you love God and he revealing to you what he loves and you say, no, I ain't doing that. Well, you telling the Lord that you ain't going to give him what he loves. So, so here's why I said um, being in a relationship with God and not sowing is like being married and no sex. You going to turn up boring. <laughs> I say, you're going to turn up boring if you're not sowing because he, he just revealed to you what he loves. He, he just told you in a text, I love a cheerful giver. You're not even a giver. You're not doing what God loves. So you got an unhappy, you got an unhappy Jesus around you. You can fix that. Look straight ahead. Don't look at your neighbor. You can fix that. <laughs> Saints, you know when, when the preacher preaching and then he preached too close to you. You up there, you you somebody don't want to take no shower and the preacher start talking some. Y'all up there depressed, don't want to take no shower. You be looking around like. <laughs> and your, your cousin on the side of you talking some. Yeah, preacher. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, she the one. Uh-huh, I got a zero dollar water bill. Why I ain't got no water bill? Because you won't take no shower? You go out of town for four weeks, you come back, your water bill is zero dollars. <laughs> she ain't wash no hands, she ain't no hand sanitizer, she ain't wash no dishes, she ain't wash herself, nothing. You come back, with a zero dollar water bill. You be up there trying to pass up the toaster. Y'all need to take some showers in here. I'm speaking prophetically. Uh-huh, pastor. Your, your cousin on the side. Uh-huh, pastor, speak. Uh-huh, see, I done told you. Uh-huh, got a zero dollar water bill. Ephesians 2, 6 says, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. So he made us to sit in the heavenly places. So when you sowing, you sowing out of the heavenly places. You sowing out of the throne room. You sowing out of the third heaven. You ever thought about the trillionaire angels that's looking for somebody that they can minister for? You ever thought about the trillionaire angels that are highly anticipating somebody that would catch the revelation of sowing and honoring God on the earth and pit Jesus first in their finances so that they can bring them into the trillionaire status, the billionaire status? It is easy for you to be a trillionaire. See, I'm renewing your mind. It is easy. It is easy. God don't even have to lift a finger to make you a trillionaire. But you're going to have to have a trillionaire mind, a trillionaire hand to soul. Because you got to be extremely generous if God going to let you access this realm. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wow. Let's go to Psalm chapter 107. Go to verse 41. Psalm 107, 41. 
This is talking about the Lord, his ability. This is the grace, the great grace of God. Look what it says. It says, you set the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. It's talking about the Lord bringing wealth to you. But you was poor. What, what happened? You received the kingdom of God and how it operates through the seed. Now the Lord is making you a, 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 a steward, a master over a flock of families. That's God blessing your fruitfulness. Your productivity is the blessing of the Lord operating. Why? Because you left the place of being poor. Now you receive the knowledge of God and you're moving in knowledge. You're moving into so and anointing. See, divine knowledge is the cheerleader of divine sowing. Divine knowledge is the cheerleader of divine sowing. Now watch this. In verse, that's verse, verse 41, talking about he was poor, but now God has set him up. Let's go to verse 43. Whoever is wise will observe these things. See, sowing is for the wise man and the wise woman. It's the behavior of the wise. If somebody don't have wisdom, from God, sowing is going to seem foolish, it's going to be negative, it's going to be perverted in their eyes. It says, whoever is wise shall observe this, these things. Even they shall understand the love and kindness of the Lord. So saints, the whole seed principle is saturated with the love and kindness of Jesus. The seed is saturated with the love and kindness of Jesus. It's a bridge to get his loving kindness to you. It's for him to saturate your life, your relationships, your money, your health, your mind with the loving kindness that he carries. Now watch this. Let's go to Psalm 107. Verse 37. Psalm 107, verse 37. And sow the fields. Here we go about sowing. Sow the fields. Sow. I'm in Psalm 107, verse 37. And sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. Watch this. It's showing you that sowing and planting yields fruits of increase. When you sowing and planting, this is a sowing anointing. Let me just say this. Sowing, you, you're going to give when you sow it. But planting is where you planted as being a sower. These are realms. See, when you sowing, the devil can stop your sowing. But when you planting, it's because you're planted. You only can do what you are. So you're able to start planting because you are planted, meaning that you established, you're not double-minded. You are planted in being a sower. And it says that it yields fruits of increase. That's money coming. That's supernatural money moving in your direction. Now look at verse 38. He blesseth them also so that they are multiplied greatly. And he suffer not their cattle to decrease. Watch. It's showing you that there's no lack. No. No satanic interference with the flow of money, provision, harvests, increase. God can keep on blessing. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It says, and sow the fields and plant vineyards that you may yield fruits of increase. So when you sowing and planting, you establish in sowing, 
you established in being a sower. You allow God to bring increase and there's no end to the increase. The increase will keep on increasing. The money just keep on coming. The finances just keep on flowing. The prosperity just keep on growing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Look at Psalm 32 verse 13. Receiving your financial chariot. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. That he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of nine, of kind and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan. Now, saints, remember. Remember Abraham, when he was sowing Isaac, he saw a ram in the bush. Now, watch this text. It's talking about the rams of the breed of Bashan and goats and the fat of kidneys of wheat. I want you to see these are all provisional graces. These are all money graces. These are all wealth impartations. When you sow and you step into money graces, money encounters, and money, uh, money mantles, provisional graces, See, but God gave him a financial chariot. See, this is what happened when you sow him. He make you ride on the high places of the earth. That's the heavenly places. Why? Because you sowing out the throne room. You sowing out the third heaven. You sowing out the blessing. You sowing out of the glory of God. That glory cloud is multiplying you because you trust the Lord. Being a billionaire, you got to pass the classroom of sewing. You got to become obsessed with sewing. You got to become so in tune with the spirit of the Lord concerning your finances that he can bring you into unprecedented riches. Because that's what he want to do. Wow. 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 Say hallelujah. See, this is what the Lord been trying to get into the hands of the people of God for so long. We talk about the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. How, how are we going to get the wealth of the wicked if there's no teachers of wealth? Wealth is the gospel. Money cometh is the gospel. Supernatural increase is the gospel. It's the good news that Jesus is your provider and he got provision for you to enjoy your life and to help others enjoy their life through you. Supernatural money cometh to those that would adapt to Jesus' love for sowing. This is a real mantle. A strong money anointing is on me. It's a real mantle. Financial miracles is a real mantle. God multiplying your seed sown is a real mantle. It's in the word of God, 2 Corinthians 9. God giving you more seed to sow is a real mantle. I've seen him do it for me. I remember asking the Lord, I don't want $1,000 to sow. To spend, I want $1,000 to sow. I want to start sowing in the $1,000. I saw what Jesus did for me. There's many people in my ministry, they've seen what Jesus has done for them because they believe in God. They believe in his prophet. They believe in the governmental kingdom principles. Now, governmental wealth will take you to a whole nother degree. Governmental wealth will take you to a whole nother arena of functionality. 
wealth would so be be so strong on you that that Satan won't have any gates of hell be able to prevail against you in any arena of your life because you done broke open in wealth. Wealth is God giving you the abundance of everything that you desire and want, including victory and justice. It's God giving you surplus. Him blowing your mind. All of your financial sorrows are broken. All of your financial delays are broken. It's the time for the gospel of Jesus Christ to show up in your money, to show up in your finances, to show up in your wealth. The blood of Jesus redeemed you from not sowing, eating your seed. He redeemed you from not being a large sower. That's a corrupt mindset. When everything else has more of a priority for your money than the gospel. It's a corrupt mindset. When you're not kingdom minded enough to know that those finances that God get into you is because you are his daughter, you are his son, and he's trusting you to support his kingdom. He's trusting you not to betray him. If you remember, how did Judas betray Jesus? For money. When you're not sowing, you become a financial Judas. You betray Jesus for the money that you got. But when you walk in honor, you're protecting yourself from betrayal. You bring your flesh underneath subjection and tell it, no, nope, we're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And the, the, the wealth anointing will hit your life and do miraculous miracles for you that you've never seen before. Let the Lord saturate your bank account. Let the Lord saturate your money, your workplace. Let him saturate your sowing. Let Jesus take your sowing into the glory realm. Let Jesus show you how to glory sow. Uh, glory sowing. Activate the glory cloud in your sowing. Let the wealth flow. Let God show you how he's going to get you into the next level of riches, the next level of prosperity, the next level of money anointing. Let Jesus do it for you. Don't look at the left or to the right because most people are not going to be wise enough to step into this. Most people are not going to step into this to see this manifest. Wow. Wow. See? Look at Psalms 4, 5. It says, offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. What do you think this text is talking about? It's talking about sowing. Offer. Sowing. Offer. It's an offering. The sacrifice of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 9 tells us that sowing increases the fruits of our righteousness. Psalm 4, 5 is saying, so offer up the seed and pit your trust in the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy 16, 17. It says, every man shall give as he is able. According to the blessing of the Lord, thy God, that, that God has given to thee. Look what it's telling you right here. It says, every man shall sow as he is able. I'm in Deuteronomy 16, 17. Deuteronomy 16, 17 says, every man shall give, he shall sow as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he hath given to thee. It's talking about 
how being a steward over what you got and sowing your way out with it. 